Okay, so in medicine, we have this victim mentality. You, usually you go to a doctor and what happens? If you've got a problem, you go to the doctor with a list of complaints. You give your list of complaints to the doctor. The doctor then proceeds to give you a diagnosis. And the diagnosis is typically a name of a disease. And names of diseases are kind of, they've kind of evolved over the last hundred years. We've kind of classified symptoms and then said, okay, this is what we're going to call this list of symptoms. This is what we're going to call this list of symptoms. So if you have diabetes, it, typically it's diagnosed by having high blood sugar, excessive thirst, excessive urination. Those are some of the main symptoms. So what we've done is we've clumped symptoms together and then given you a name for those symptoms and told you you have this disease and we've made you a victim. Just that protocol right there takes you out of the driver's seat. Because once you're a victim, now it's not your fault. And I'm not talking about genetic disease. I'm not talking about being born uh, with spina bifida. I'm not talking about somebody who's born with some type of dwarfism or congenital problem. I'm talking about the chronic degenerative diseases, the things like autoimmune disease, diabetes, osteoporosis, cancer, heart disease, stroke, etc. So it takes you out of the driver's seat and it makes it not your fault and now you're a victim and now victims, what do they need? They need help. And if the help doesn't really solve your problem, is it help? So if we guise it as help and we call it help, it's still not help. And this is the death of common sense. Because how can you expect to go to the doctor, get a diagnosis of a disease, be told that you need to take this drug for the rest of your life and you just have to deal with it and that's okay. Well, where did the disease come from? Why do I have this disease? What can I do to make this disease go away other than take this drug that my body doesn't really recognize? So, we want to move away from a victim mentality and we want to take our power back and we want to become advocates for ourselves. We want to become a warrior. This is what I call a gluten-free warrior for those of you who are gluten-free. Is somebody who realizes that although they may have a condition or a disease, that they are empowered and all they have to do is apply these seven principles and they will have the power to restore their health without the need for a bunch of intervention that doesn't work, that just masks the problem even further. So. There's a concept in the U.S. today, it's called medicalization of, of America, and this was actually written about in several major medical journals. And so what does medicalization really mean? Medicalization means that we create a new disease for every list of symptoms that anybody would ever have so that we can classify that person into a drug category. You have this list of symptoms, you get this drug. Oh, the drug caused these symptoms? Well, now you have this and you need this drug. If we look at the market for pharmaceuticals, and these statistics are a little bit old, but $693 billion in 07, 737 billion in 08, and by next year, next couple of years, we're looking at over a trillion dollars. Now, that would be great and fine if people were not sick anymore. In essence, if we were spending this much money and we were actually curing disease and stopping disease, trillion dollars, what's money when you're saving lives, right? But that's not the case. The case is medicine and surgery properly prescribed kills more people than anything else in the world. Um, this was a study published in 1998 in the Journal of the American Medical Association. And they underestimated, and they admittedly underestimated the problem, but they said just, a lot, just prescription medications alone, properly prescribed, were responsible for 106,000 deaths a year. Aspirin last year killed about 12,500 people. Aspirin. Over the counter, right? So, if the diseases that we're treating aren't being cured, yet we're spending hundreds of billions up to a trillion dollars a year to try to cure, to try to correct them. And the way that we're trying to cure and correct them is killing more people than anything else. Does that make sense? So back to the first slide, the death of common sense. It doesn't take a rocket science 
scientists to look at the numbers and figure that part out. So here's some statistics for you. Children 0 to 18, on average, just over 4 prescriptions per child. 11 prescriptions per adult age 19 to 64. And 28 prescriptions per senior age 65 and over. So back to medicalization. These are examples of diseases that have been created in the last 10 years or so that are not really diseases. But they've been created so that we can classify people into a drug category. IBS stands for irritable bowel syndrome. What are the causes of irritable bowel syndrome? What is irritable bowel syndrome? Irritable bowel syndrome is when you go to the doctor and you say, my gut hurts, I'm bloated, I have constipation followed by diarrhea, sometimes it's back and forth, uh, and I don't know why. And it doesn't matter what I eat and it doesn't matter what I do, these are the things that are happening to me. And the doctor says, oh, you have irritable bowel syndrome, here, take this medication. This will make it go away. And usually it's some type of antacid. Um, or some type of antibiotic and it doesn't fix the problem. It just perpetuates it, makes it worse in many cases. And then when it doesn't go away, he says, you're just, uh, you have too much stress. Here, take this antidepressant. So if you look at the bottom of this list, what do you see there? Depression. The number one prescription in the U.S. is for depression. Right? More scripts for depression than anything else. PMDD. Anybody know what that is? It's a new one. Premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Um, in other words, it's PMS. And now we have drugs to treat that too. GAD, GAD stands for Generalized Anxiety Disorder. So a person comes into a doctor's office says, Doc, I'm under a lot of stress. Uh, I've got a deadline at the office. I'm not, I'm not doing real well at home. My wife and me, and me argue all the time. My kids are irritating. Um, my heart races all the time. What can I do? Oh, well, you have generalized anxiety disorder. Here, take this drug and it will numb your senses and it will block out all the reality in your life so that you can go through life like a zombie and not experience real raw emotion as if there's something wrong with real raw emotion. And then, of course, depression. Then depression. You know, it's one thing if a person is going to commit suicide, right? And we have depression to that degree. It's another thing if somebody is just generally not very happy for a variety, a list of different reasons, and they're all self-induced. Um, so, for example, uh, an easy example of what can cause depression is wake up every morning, have a couple of cups of coffee, watch the news, okay? Right? Because the news is depressing. Um, you go to work, to a job that you don't like, but first you have to commute in traffic that you hate. And you sit at a desk for eight hours under an artificial light source so you can't make any melatonin. Melatonin makes you happy. And then uh, when you get home, you don't exercise. You, you maybe stop by a fast food restaurant at lunch. Maybe you um, have a horrible dinner and you don't do any exercise and you don't go outside at all. Yeah, you're going to be depressed. That's depressing. This the thought of all that, right? That's the death of common sense because you could very easily look at your life and self-analyze and come to the conclusion that if maybe I change some of the things that I do on a daily basis that I wouldn't be so darn depressed. It doesn't require Prozac. These are some quotes a good friend of mine sent to me uh, from various other doctors and patients. And I, like, and, I, and I wanted to put them up here because I think they, they kind of help to reestablish common sense. People spend half their life spending all of their health to acquire wealth and the second half of their life spending more than their wealth trying to get their health back. Does that ring a bell? So you go through life trying to make ends meet, trying to get ahead, abusing yourself, abusing your family, abusing your kids. And I don't say that in, the, in a physical abuse. I say that as a neglect in terms of you do so much with work that you ignore everything else. And then once you finally get to a point where you can say, I'm there, your health is in the tank, and now you're at the doctor's office, you're on multiple medications, you're not going to get your health back that way, but you're going to spend a lot of money. The number one cause of bankruptcy and financial stress are costs related to health problems. So it's simple. 
Care Health your first investment. What do you mean organic food is too expensive? Your health is not a place to save money. You'll spend 10 times as much later at the hospital. One hospital emergency visit can run up to $20,000. How much Whole Foods shopping will that get you? 